Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How's everyone doing? Wow, that was a good response. MashaAllah. I think if Cleveland had some coffee places, they would be more energized. So inshallah, you can come by to Michigan whenever you get a chance, inshallah. It's good to see everyone. It's always a pleasure. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa manwala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering, to shower upon us with his mercy to reward you all for joining and participating. It's always a blessing to see our communities come out and show up. Oh, you came? You drove from Detroit? Wow, mashallah. So we got people from Detroit here. You know what? I saw you with the turban and I didn't see your face. I said, that turban has to be from Michigan. Wallahi, now it's here. So mashallah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah to make it easier for our brothers and sisters who are suffering around the world. May Allah give them victory over their oppressors. May Allah give victory to our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with our brothers around the world. Any place where people may be suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve them from their suffering and be with the children, the elderly and the weak. Ameen Allahumma, Ameen. Jazakumullah khair miftah. Always for bringing our communities together. And thank you to all the volunteers. Give the volunteers a round of applause. Anas radiallahu anhu mentions that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulallah, inni uridu safara fazawidni. Inni uridu safara fazawidni. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I intend to travel, and to embark on this journey. So provide me with provision. Subhanallah, it was part of the sunnah that the sahaba would always go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before embarking on their journeys. And they would seek advice. So Anas radiallahu anhu mentions that this man came to Rasulullah before departing and said, give me something that I can leave with. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam then said, Zawadakallahu bi taqwa. May Allah allow you to be mindful of Him. Be mindful of Allah. Be conscious of Allah. Of course, as you all know, this is a basic nasiha that we give all the time. This is an advice that we listen to and we hear every Jumu'ah. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullah, ittaqullah, ittaqullah. We hear it all the time. So this Sahabi had a similar response by saying, Ya Rasulullah Zidni, give me something else. Okay, we know and we understand what it means to be conscious of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam then said, Ya Ghafirullahu Lak, Allah will forgive you. Did he give him a nasiha when he said Allah will forgive you? No, he didn't. The Prophet wasallam just mentioned the reward of being mindful of Allah. He then responds to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, zidni, give me more. Qala wa yuyassiru lak al khayra haytu ma kunt. And Allah will always facilitate your khayr wherever you may be. And that man then left the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet Sallallahu every morning and evening he would make this dua. Please add this to your list of duas. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. He would ask Allah every single day, O oh Allah, I seek your guidance. O oh Allah, allow me to be mindful of you. Wa al-afaf, O oh Allah, grant me chastity. Walghina, self-satisfaction and contentment. Every morning and evening, he would ask Allah to make him among those whom live their lives with, with taqwa. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, clearly mentions in the Quran, he loves people of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people for their mujahada, for their sacrifice. Anytime, even in relationships, talk is cheap. You can say you love someone, but what if you smack them right after? You can say you love someone, but what if you betray them a second later? 
This love is meaningless because love, the best definition of love is action. It's not an emotion. This emotion is a result of an action. And this is why people misunderstand love. I fell in love from the first sight. Boom. It doesn't happen like that. It comes through action. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muttaqeen, people of taqwa, because they lived a life of strife and struggle. Can I ask a question, everyone? Can I ask a question? Can you all at least answer? Hey, wow. Like support the other imams that are going to come up. You know, just say yes or no. You don't have to answer, but you know, alhamdulillah. Who can give me a good definition of taqwa? A simple one, a nice one. It doesn't have to be philosophical. Don't go. A nice definition that we all can learn from and take away. Who can share? Go ahead. You had your hand up? No? Anyone else? Go ahead, sister. God consciousness, very good. So muraqabatullah, aware of Allah's presence. Go ahead. Belief in Allah's plan. Belief in Allah's plan, very good. So the one in the back, for sure I can't hear you, so you gotta come a little forward. Come, come, come closer. Okay, until he comes up. Sisters, it's not a fundraiser, so you're good, you can raise your hand. Go ahead, say it again. Fear of Allah. Okay. Go ahead. Worshipping Allah. Stay away from. Stay away from. Basically, whatever Allah has prohibited. Go ahead. Constant remembrance, Constant remembrance of Allah. Oh, you, got, you all got some deep points, mashallah. Go ahead. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka. So worship Allah as though Allah can... Worship Allah as though you can see Him. But since we believe as Muslims, we are... Unable to see Allah, we must believe that Allah is all observant. Very good. That's a long one. I couldn't even translate that so easily. So no, it's an easy one. Okay. I'm going to give you a definition of taqwa that you will never forget in your life. Okay? I promise you won't. This is a promise. The best meaning of taqwa is no. La. That's tough. How do I tell myself no? How strong am I when my desires take over? How strong am I to tell myself and to go and to suppress my shahwa by saying no? My eyes want to go free and engage. I say no. Someone angers me. I want to respond. And I have the ability to respond. But no, my parents may upset me. I want to respond. No. Taqwa is mastering no. So if you and I think that taqwa is just fear of Allah and we live our lives, it's hard. It's a long life process that one has to live by day in and day out to master no. What has allowed us to engage in sins except that we did not perfect the art of saying no to ourselves? We say yes when we give to people, but we say no to our shahwa. We, so, we say no to our listening that is haram. It's no. And this is why the Prophet wasallam made sure that you and I diversify our amal. It's not just one act of worship that allows you and I to be among the people of taqwa. It has to be something that I am mindful of every single day. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu says, Ittaqillaha kunt. That be mindful of Allah wherever you may be. Anything that you are doing. When it's khayr, you are mindful of Allah. You experience spiritual presence. I am aware of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Haythuma kunt. I am not only reminded of Allah in the masjid, not in a miftah conference, not among uh, righteous people. I am reminded of Allah throughout my day, throughout the night. Okay, that may be hard. The Prophet wasallam said, Always follow a bad deed with a good deed. Why would you follow a good deed 
after a bad deed. Because you're mindful of Allah. You're mindful of Allah. Taqwa is creating a process towards mastery. No. It's a whole process. It's not a khutbah that we hear about Jahannam and I leave the hall and I'm afraid. It's a process. It's creating a whole system, setting boundaries between me and shaitan. Between me and my desires. The Prophet ﷺ says, every time you do a bad deed, follow that with a good deed. Because we don't give up. Taqwa does not mean perfection. Unfortunately, when we talk about taqwa, we give people this image of perfection. That if you are a muttaqi, you are perfect. No. A muttaqi is a person that mastered the process, perfected the process. That's it. But are they perfect? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ إِنَّ الَّ- People of taqwa may be touched by shaitan. A devil touch, a whisper, desires, then they fall. But what happens, what makes this group special? The moment they fall, تذكروا, they remember Allah. They've created a process for themselves that allows them to be mindful of Allah, that allows them immediately to wake up. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ They wake up right away. It's easy for them to wake up. It doesn't take a month or two. They realize they're wrong. Allah says also in the Quran, وَعِدَّةِ الْمُتَّقِينَ When He speaks about Jannah, He says it was prepared for the God conscious. Who are they, Ya Allah? Those whom give, يُنْفِقُونَ in times of ease and times of difficulty. So taqwa is a journey. They're always giving, they're always sharing, they're always moving. It's not a one-time thing. It's not that you and I just make dua and somehow, some way we gain a law. Okay, Ya Rabbi, what else? وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْرِ they suppress their anger and they forgive wal afina nas they are people of goodness you see how they are diversifying their actions it's not all into one bucket it's not just the ramadan when we talk about taqwa it's a lifestyle and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he said wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin walladhina idha fa'alu fahishatan aw zalamu anfusahum dhakaru allah fastaghfiru li even those who may engage in animalistic behaviors and engage in haram, what makes these people unique, Ya Allah? Immediately they wake up and seek Allah's forgiveness. None of us are perfect. Wallahi, Allah has hid our sins. And never think that the speaker is better than the listener. Allah has beautified us by concealing our wrongdoings. We can walk after this, give salam to each other, everyone is smiling, and everything is beautiful, and we may have committed a sin last night in the midst of darkness where no one was watching except Allah. But again, we're doing it for the sake of Allah. We're fighting for the sake of Allah. We've made this decision to be among the muttaqeen. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu beautifully says, اتق الله بطاعته وأطع الله بتقواه it's so hard to even translate. He said, اتق الله بطاعته That be mindful of Allah through your worship. Our lives as Muslims is worship until death. If I sleep and I am tired, and my intention is to regain energy, to start a beautiful day, I get ajr from my sleep. My sleep becomes ibadah. There is no religion that tells you and teaches you that everything you are doing is ibadah. Even when you sleep, even when you eat, even when we play basketball, even when we play sports, for the sisters volleyball, whatever. There's ajab. There's ajab, everything. But we have to be intentional about it. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, اتَّقِ bi ta'atih." Be mindful of Allah through everything you do. Imagine if I was mindful of Allah when giving my charity. Would my charity be different? Would I just give money? Or would I think of the process of how I'm giving money? I can just, someone comes in need, throw the money on their face. I still gave, but the process was wrong. 
Allah says, لا تطيلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى Do not destroy your charity by bragging and, and belittling others. That's what taqwa does. Now you're aware of the system. So when I'm doing khair, I'm aware. I'm volunteering, I'm aware. I'm playing, I'm aware. And then he says, وَأَطِعِ اللَّهَ بِتَقْوَى And worship Allah through being conscious of Allah. It's not easy. It's not an easy journey. My brothers and sisters, if this was easy, would Allah have given us, have given us a whole month just to become among the muttaqin? You, you and I think it's easy? Allah gave us a whole month. Ramadan is the month of taqwa for a reason. Why? Because throughout the day, I am training myself to be a muttaqi. This water right here, no one is watching. I want to drink. Oh, I'm mindful of Allah. This is why we capitalize on Ramadan. Because Ramadan, whatever you do throughout the day, you are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, I saw a delicious uh, plate. I can't eat. I heard of this restaurant. I can't go. It's daytime. I have to fast. So what happens in the end? We've graduated from this university of taqwa, mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah says, وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ What is the closest to your body? Your clothes. Allah is telling you and I, taqwa should be your garment. This is what you and I put on every single day. When we walk out, we are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, subhanallah, what taqwa does, the ulama alayhim rahmatullah said, At-taqwa huwa quwwatu al-ijtidhabi wa quwwatu al-ijtinabi. That what taqwa does, it allows our reception, this connection that we have with Allah to be very clear. So what taqwa does, it creates this force of attraction. You're attracted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa quwwatu al-ijtinab. You experience this, uh, this force of distancing yourself from haram. So you gravitate to Allah and you're pushed away from haram. And this is what taqwa does because you and I are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, Al-Hasan al-Basri alayhi rahmatullah. He says, Rahim Allahu abdan waqafa inda hamdi. That may Allah's mercy be upon a person that stops at a moment of concern. This is what taqwa does. I'm concerned and I'm overwhelmed, and I am consumed. I want to do this haram. I want to do it. You know, it starts off with a thought. Sometimes we tell people, and this is very destructive, and please never accept an asiha like this, where they say, you know what? We're not held accountable for our thoughts. So you can think haram. As long as you're not engaging in haram or practicing haram, your thoughts are legitimized. That is very destructive. Because a passing thought becomes that which consumes you. And then it turns into action. And then it becomes an addiction. It's very destructive when it comes to our thoughts. So he says, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا وَقَفَ عِنْدَ هَمِّهِ إِنْ كَانَ خَيْرًا أَمْضَاهِ وَإِنْ كَانَ شَرًّا تَرَكَهِ May Allah's mercy be upon a person that stops at a moment of concern and overwhelming desire. If they find any khair in that which they're about to go about and do, then they go along. And if they find shar and evil and wrong, they stay away from it. I end my, 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 my talk, my dear brothers and sisters. Mufti Asim, Shaykhan, it's good to see you. So our Shaykh is here, so I'm not going to go... I'm just going to end with two things and then we'll call it a night inshallah for me and we'll listen to our mashayikh, they're far more learned. Two pieces of advice that I give myself and everyone here that allows us to be among the people of muttaqi, among the people of taqwa and among those whom Allah has declared his love for in the Quran, inna Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqi. Two pieces of advice. Number one, 
is spiritual presence. Be present, and I need to be present in everything we are doing. Even when you give salam, how many people have you given salam to and they did not acknowledge you? Didn't that bother you? Yeah, right? Brother, sisters were bothered. Brothers, no one said yes. But it shows you, it bothers you. Spiritual presence. When we pray, I am present. When I'm smiling, I am present. When I give nasiha, I am present. When I'm with my spouse, I am present. When I'm with my children, I am present. When I'm playing sports, presence. What happens when people get out of the court immediately? Everyone jumps on their phones. Enjoy the moment. Subhanallah, even when people, I think Muslims are the only people when they hike, they're on their phones. Like I've seen many people hike, they're just living the moment. Muslims, they're just on their phones. I was like, just live the moment. So teaching ourselves how to be spiritually present when doing anything, even if it's a simple act of salam, be aware that you and I are rewarded for that salam. And wallahi, that will go so far. Inshallah, because now you're going to realize how much good you are doing because you're aware of the good. The last piece of advice that I give myself and everyone here, one of the strongest forces that allow you and I to be among people of taqwa is Allah's remembrance as much as you can. It helps. Never underestimate the power of saying Bismillah. Don't think that you have to do so much just to be a, a person that is mindful of Allah. It's what you do that matters. And how you do it is what matters. Never underestimate committing to saying Astaghfirullah a hundred times in the morning, a hundred times in the evening. Fighting our temptations doesn't, doesn't just happen. We remember Remember Allah at moments of ease for you to be remembered at moments of difficulty. We can't expect shaitan to present all the desires all at once and I fight it. I have to prepare myself for this battle. Just commit. A hundred times it's still thought in the morning. When you're walking to your car, when you're walking to your class, when you're walking to your... Or la ilaha illallah. Or subhanallah. And what's even better with all of that, at the morning du'as and the evening du'as. You begin your day with du'a and you end your day with du'a and you will see bi'idhnillah and I will see how far this will take us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whom are mindful of Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us in this journey, to make it easy for us as we embark on this journey. Ameen Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khaira. As-salamu alaykum.